Hi guys, welcome to this case study and in this case study, we will going to look at the article production by graduate students in biochemistry PhD programs. So in the PhD program, as you're aware, people have to write a lot of article based on the research that they are doing. And we have a data set on which we will try to predict the number of articles which a graduate student will produce after looking at the data. So before we move ahead, let's first see the data that data set that we have and uh, what are the variables which are in support of article production and will going to help in case study for the article production. All right, so here is a data set which is a biochemist data set and art is basically the article, the count of articles produced during last three years of PhD. So it has their count as you can see uh, a lot of counts are zero and down there you have different counts so so it has its own range and then you have uh, you know gender of fem column which indicates whether it's a man or woman who has produced the article and then after that uh, you have other variable indicating whether it is uh, married or single and then the number of kids that uh, an individual is having so for example man married you have one you know children and then woman married one children over here three children so another factor which may impact the article production and then finally uh, this variable is uh, prestige of phd department so it's sort of a rating which has been given to the prestige of phd department uh, under which uh, and basically i've i think it's related to the college and uh, the respective rating which has been given and finally you have like mentors over here m-e-n-t so it's basically the count of articles produced by phd mentor during last three years so whether these mentors are really helping these students to produce the articles all right so this is about uh, a uh, quick information about the case study and the data set you can find the description of the data set uh, down there in the description along with this uh, I though I have put the solutions files of the case study in both Python and R but I highly recommend that the question I will going to tell you you should look at that and do your own research uh, and uh, you know try to solve your case study on their on your own but I understand that in some cases it will be difficult time time consuming and things like that so you can basically refer to uh, the solutions and then you know try uh, to solidify your learning all right so let's go back to the case study so let's go ahead and see the questions well the first question is very simple uh, read the csv uh, and drop and ignore the columns which is serial number in the given file biochemist.csv well uh, if you have been doing the case studies which I have produced earlier, you know that uh, by default you will have to import the relevant libraries if you are working in R, Python, then uh, I'm just assuming that you have imported them and uh, that's why I'm directly and jumping directly on the uh, case study. So what I need is uh, from you to do is uh, once you have uh, read the data set biochemist.csv you drop uh, the first column which is serial number because it does not add any relevance to the case study and after that you need to check the shape of the data set you need to be aware about that method which is helping in identifying the shape of the data set and it should have 915 rows and 6 columns all right and you need to identify what is the key objective of the case study what kind of data is is uh, in the response variable art so you so basically you know there can be different types of case studies like uh, prediction classification segmentation and all so if you are a beginner you know you need to really identify the problem that you are solving that what is the objective of this clearly articulating the um, the problem statement and then trying to understand with the help of the type of data uh, which uh, is basically the response variable or the target variable over here which is art uh, in some cases you may even uh, asked to identify the target variable then you need to calculate the mean variance 
and ratio of mean variance of the variable and you need to identify based on your statistical learning that uh, what does it indicate and you need to write your observations about it. Then you need to summarize the entire data set with all the variables, not just the numerical variable which is a default property but you need to be aware about uh, uh, how you can take or how you can factor in the effect of all the variables for when doing the summarization of the data. Then you need to plot a basic scatter plot matrix for the data set. Do you see any two variables which are correlated? So based on the entire uh, data set scatter plot uh, matrix, you need to identify what are the variables which are correlated and you need to comment or you need to write your observations about it. Then plot a histogram for the number of article published and comment on the distribution, whether it is like flat or peaked or normal, not normal. If not normal, it's like right skewed, left skewed, what sort of shape which this histogram is indicating to you and uh, what do you think, what are your observations about it. And then create a frequency table on the values of art and support the comments written in the uh, Q6. So based on the shape that is uh, you have identified uh, what's been asked to create a frequency table uh, for art values and uh, your comments uh, should get a support from this table. And then can we implement linear regression? So, so by looking at uh, the response variable, which is art, uh, do you think we can implement the, uh, the linear regression model on this? Well, you need to write your observation if yes, why? If no, then why? Then check the data type for all variables and draw a box plot for variable MAR, which is married, against the response variable R and comment on the distribution whether you know it's it's a uh, very wide or it's very shrinked or you have outliers how much different uh, you know the minimum and maximum values are or the first quartile the last quartile values are all those things uh, you know you should be able to observe and comment only on those things where you are seeing is worth commenting or worth highlighting uh, let's say to your uh, to, to your management or to your staff which is viewing your presentation. Then fit a Poisson model uh, using all the predictors against the response variable art. The, then you need to summarize it. You need to identify whether all are significant or not. How would you how would you do that? And if not, then name the predictor variable which is not. So I highly recommend that uh, you after fitting, the, the important point is uh, summarizing it, identifying whether significant or not, commenting about it, why it is not significant or why it is significant, and uh, you know pointing it out uh, the the predictor variable which is not significant. Then what AIC termed as what is a what is AIC why it is used, and while comparing uh, between models which is preferred lower or higher. Let's say you know you decided okay you will fit the linear regression, but here we are asking you to fit even the Poisson model. Then uh, what what how would you basically compare or you have planned let's say after doing this entire case study you want to fit altogether a different model and then want to evaluate the model. So that's why this this is important. The question is important while comparison, uh, comparing between models, uh, which is preferred lower or higher AIC. It can be a, an important interview question as well about how do you compare various models and what what is the metric that you really uh, pick to do that. Then interpret the coefficient of all predictors for the position model, which is fitted above. And you need to explain uh, in a sentence for each. And then after that, are there any outliers, leverage, or influence points in the data set? Very, very important to highlight. If yes, you can comment your observation. Quick hint for the R users is that uh, you need to use the package R for this and uh, get influence for Python uh, users to fit the for the model fit. So by this, you will be able to identify the outlier slash leverage slash influence point. Then does the poison model uh, fit well? 
well, comment on the residual deviance and the degree of freedom about what do you understand from this and uh, how does it contribute in explaining whether the poison model is uh, fitting well all right so next question is check if the data indicates over dispersion for the poison model uh, that you have fitted and hint is uh, compare the mean and variance of the data set or use dispersion test follow up question of uh, question two uh, which is here um, name the alternative model which you would use to take care of over dispersion so you need to know uh, once you have identified uh, whether the poison model is indicating over dispersion then what modeling approach you will choose so if if something uh, you know you will see that uh, very much asked in case of an interview about uh, if if a certain situation is happening then how would you proceed so you need to know if if you are in this field where you have you are using a poison model a lot then if over dispersion happen then what sort of uh, alternative model you will going to use take care of over dispersion so quick when the estimated over dispersion parameter is zero that means uh, mean equals to variance and uh, nb model reduces to the poison model so which is negative binomial then which package is used to implement the alternative model in r python you need to know about this otherwise you won't be able to use the model then uh, will this alternative model give better fit to the data then you can comment on the residual deviance and degree of freedom, uh, degree of freedom post model fit. So you need to fit the model and then identify the residual deviance and degree of freedom, and you can even compare it with the previous Poisson model. Compare the output of uh, question number eleven, which we discussed in the previous slide, and the question number fourteen in explaining out the two model, which is the better fit. Then what is the difference between uh, zero inflated and hurdle model? So these are the two different variations. Which package in R and Python is used to run these models? Again, this is related to this case study. Then these these uh, questions which are highlighted in red is basically for the R users because of uh, uh, some of the technical competencies is available in R because of highly statistical in nature. So the question is fit the zero inflated and hurdle models to this data set using both Poisson and alternative distribution model suggested in the previous question and then summarize each of the model and then find then next question is uh, in the model above you do you see any do any of the variable included in the model provided predictive power so you need to identify what first of all what is predictive power and uh, do any of the variable included in the model provide predictive power suggest which predictive variable is the most significant out of all of the predictors and then finally the last question compare all the models used uh, that means the Poisson, the alternative model zero inflated and hurdle models and tabulate them and recommend which is the best fit for the data set provided right because in the end and when when you will conclude this you will finally present uh, you know all the comparisons of the model in front of uh, your users or management and basically give them okay this 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 is all the research this is all the things which i have done based on the shape of this data based on the distribution and uh, what the data is really uh, you know telling us and then after fitting up all these models uh, which model is really working well and this is a metric which is giving us that we should go ahead and uh, start working the next level of prediction with the help of the particularly chosen model so this entire case study will going to help you develop a great skill set in the field of the negative binomial or the Poisson model and then uh, hurdle models and zero inflated models which are like um, slightly different than the regular field but uh, highly recommended that uh, you should be aware about this because uh, whenever the situation is ari arising based on the data that you are handling you need to be aware about uh, what sort of model will be really good so i hope you will enjoy this and uh, data set is present solutions are present in the description uh, but i highly recommend that you do your own research and solve these case studies on your own because research will going to solidify your understanding as well as uh, keep your understanding and learning in a longer run 
whenever you are identifying any such issues again in future. So I hope you will enjoy this case study and uh, I will meet you in the next video with some more case study which will help you to take your skills to a next level. Till then, thank you for watching.